Hey, it's Samantha, and I just listened to Vec's song, Sunbeam Dreams, and it's a really relaxing, like, lo-fi kind of beat, and it has really warm vibes, and then the lyrics are just really poetic, really loving, just really freeing, and it's a very nice song, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then we have a bunch of fan questions that I'll be asking Vect, and he will be answering them or saying no comment on the fan questions. So that's what we're doing. So Sunbeam Dreams is from the album Dark Days, Bright Nights. And it's about love, it's about self-love, it's about finding that inner peace before you can give that to others. And I would love it if you talk more about what inspired that song. That's my first question is, you know, it's such a different side to you. And so I wondered what inspired Sunbeam Dreams? As always, I'm glad you like it and feel it so well. This came from an evolve I was working through. That evolve I was waiting through and learning from was breaking a lot of bad habits, bad energy, and just learning from experience. It was even before I did mushrooms for the first time that I knew its energy and potential. So based off of how evolved I was at that time, I was able to think as positive as I should about psilocybin. Then the perfect time I did do them was in the quarantine. Myself and someone else did them, and I did a few times more afterwards and had some deep experiences with them, and this is what I've seen when my third eye is open. How often do you meditate, and how do you do so? Much more than I used to. I just shut everything off, even if I'm constricted by a loud environment, and I just lift off with my eyes closed, breathing, inhaling eight seconds slowly and deeply through my nose, and eight seconds slowly and deeply through my mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And every single time you start drifting, which is easy to do when you have ADD, you just shift that drift back to your breathing. Focus and concentrate on your breathing. Keep restarting and restarting if you have to. You know, this song, as well as the other song that we'll be discussing on this album today is Everything Ends. And that song's really about not trivializing time. And there's some really beautiful lyrics like, Sands of time fall like rain and snow. Question every valid thing, don't be ashamed to know. And it's a really upbeat song, even though it's really about how death is the most, you know, finite thing, everything else changes. And it's, you know, it's powerful. It reminds you that change is important. And one of my questions to you, Vect, is what taught you to let go? Well said, and you said it perfectly in tailing the song. What taught me to let go is the same as when I stopped trying to have expectations for things. This isn't doing me any good. Let God control what I cannot. I just rested my faith on release instead of holding in different aspects. When holding on hurts, it's right to let go. Uh, Another lyric that I really loved was, We all have a Rubik's Cube of anomalies to solve. Gotta pass tests in order to evolve. And that's really powerful. And I was wondering, how do you face change? Change is inevitable in all ways, so it circles back to the expectations. You take control of something sometimes when you don't even need to, or sometimes there's victory and you're fighting against the tide, but not usually. In most cases, I feel it's better to go with the change rather than resisting. It's about what or who changes in what or however way, really. So in the song, Everything Ends, we're talking about how, you know, we don't trivialize time and accept change. And I was wondering, how do you keep your life fluid instead of stagnant? It's nice you feel the message to it. I'm very influenced because... My town is very, very counterproductive and stagnant, and I really hate being like that because I've felt and seen the negative results, so I get off my ass quite often and do productive and safer things as time has grown. What's a challenge that you overcame this year? Ooh, that'd probably be my breakup. Also, I had difficulty getting to a Tom Segura show in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania this year, but 
We still manage to get there. Another lyric that I really liked was, Pain is a nourishment to strengthen and improve us. It's cold like winter, but supposed to move us. And that's really awesome. And I was wondering, how do you face the fear of change? You know, I'm pretty sure we all have that. We all like to change. We like the results, but it's really hard moving through that process with a clear, precise mind when you're dealing with fear. And I was wondering, how do you face the fear of change? Fear can fuck itself. Seriously, it could eat shit with rocks and glass in it. Fuck fear. I have none. Zero. I killed all my fear years ago, and I vehemently recommend everyone to do the same. Therefore, the bad changes don't hurt me as much. And bad change comes like a sharp knife in the stomach in the worst scenario. But the secret is not losing yourself in franticism, sadness, or anger. Because you're going to really go through some changes for the worse when you start losing your shit. Feel me? So, don't go off the walls as a reaction when things give you a punch. You have to just take the punch and use it as inspiration. Channel it. Produce it somewhere else. Produce it somewhere good and healthy. Use that anger to help out a homeless person. Or use that worry you got hitting a punching bag or rigorously cleaning something. It's all you, man. Your reaction is usually your results. So Sunbeam Dreams and Everything Ends were so passionate and poetic and full of warm vibes as well as a really an awakening of wisdom to not trivialize time and how everybody kind of has that fear of change but it's why it's so important to embrace it and that's a really powerful lesson and with that being said now I'll move to the fan questions that we have for Vect. And I'm just going to read them off, and they're anonymous, and you can always say no comment. Do you prefer indica or sativa for smoking? I'm all in for both, whenever. I never discriminate my ups or downs when smoking out. What's your preferred way of smoking tree? I smoke it like I speak it, blunt. Will you have another album coming out soon? No, I will not. I can't say forever, but I will say probably for a long time. There's no more Vec music now, only when there's collaborations. I don't have anything left to say by myself anymore. I feel I've said enough. Collaborating is likely the only way you'll see any movement from Vec. I did eight albums, so it's time to retire indefinitely. Who's your favorite artist? Ooh, a lot, but here's everyone that are my favorites in alphabetical order. DZK, Esham, Amir, Brother Lynch Hung, Bloodbath, Dark Funeral, Dope, Fear Factory, Eminem, Immortal, a black metal band, Immortal Technique, Crazy Bone, Necro, Nirvana, Pantera, that one was meant to be, Slipknot, Soulfly, Suffocate, and Velvet Acid Christ. How long did it take you to grow your dreads? I've grown them and started them in 2004, but of course I've trimmed them over the years as they've grown too far. What made you shave your beard and mustache? Oh, I was a goatee, never a beard for me, but mustache, yeah. I did a beard one time in 2008 and realized it ain't for me. The rest of my facial hair, I was rather oblivious to this for a long time but I realize it doesn't look as good as it feels. And as I evolve for the better, I liked it less. The shit is too high maintenance, unless you want to have gross facial hair. So I'd rather just cut it all down more. What's one of your favorite songs that you did and why? On this album, probably most, if not all, since I've done the most work and created things differently and with a different mental attitude while writing and recording it. But... These three significant songs that we discuss are definite favorites. What's one of your favorite hobbies you like to do on your downtime? In the downtime, such as a duration of relaxing, toke and watch jokes, get a comedy special or show on, light a blunt, feel it all. The last stand-up i seen was Gary Shandling, Alone in Vegas from 1984 on YouTube, RIP. I like creating a lot of things during those times too, writing, Graphics, editing videos, reading, all that. 
What inspired you to do comedy at a point in your life? Friends and acquaintances always telling me to do more with my humor. The cup got real full over time, and when it spilled, I just went for it. The most raw, uncut, authentic form of comedy is stand-up.